This video is part two. It will cover the property of liquids. So first thing we need to do is look at what are liquids. The particles of a liquid um, are closer together and more ordered than those of a gas and are less ordered than those of a solid. So liquids are going to fall somewhere between gases and solids. Liquids have a definite volume, a fairly high density, and they are relatively incompressible. Like gases, liquids can flow and thus are considered to be fluids. But we're going to look at each of these properties a little more in depth. The first thing we're going to talk about is the differences in the kinetic molecular theory for liquids. So in the last video, we looked at the kinetic molecular theory for gases. Liquids follow a similar theory, but there are some differences that liquids have from the theory for gases. So the particles of a liquid are in constant motion, similar to a gas, that's the same. However, liquid particles are closer together and usually slower moving. This allows for intermolecular forces, the dipole-dipole and the hydrogen bond specifically to come into effect. So we are going to have more force of attraction in a liquid than we did in a gas. The effects of the intermolecular forces yield the properties of a liquid. So in the kinetic molecular theory for gases, there were no forces of attraction. But because liquids are moving a little slower, it allows the intermolecular forces to do their work a little better. And the effects of those intermolecular forces uh, yield the properties of liquids that we are about to talk about. So the first property of liquids is its density. Liquids can vary in density, but most liquids have a density a thousand times higher than the density of a gas. A higher density is due to the closer arrangement of the particles. So this is the same image we looked at when we talked about the density of gases, and you can see that liquids fall in between a solid and a gas. They are much closer together than those of a gas, but they are still moving around and they are farther apart than those of a solid, but they are still a thousand times more dense than those of a gas. Liquids are much less compressible than gases. Um, an example uh, is if a liquid is compressed at 20 degrees by 100 atm or atmospheres, which is a lot, its volume only decreases by 4%, which is not a lot. This has to do with the high density of liquids. So if you look at this image, you can see these gas particles over here are so spread out that we are able to compress them and get them really tight, tightly packed together but we are able to compress a lot. Our liquids are already fairly close together. They are compressible. There is still some empty space there, but much less compressible than those of a gas. So we can't compress them that much. The example I like to talk about that really looks at both gas and liquid is a water bottle. So if you were to have a water bottle um, that say it was empty, no water in it, but the cap was on and you squeeze it, you can, even with your own strength, you can compress it pretty good. But if you had the same bottle and it was full of water and you squeezed it, you wouldn't be able to squeeze it very much. So uh, liquids are a lot less compressible than gases, and gases are highly compressible. Diffusion. So if you remember diffusion from gases, we talked about the perfume and passing gas, and the gas is diffusing throughout the room. Well, liquids diffuse just like gases do, except the process is much slower because of the intermolecular forces that slow the movement of the particles. The example we're going to look at is if you took regular water and you dropped food color again. So you can see, this is like the real life example in here, you can see at the molecular level, but I like this image really a lot. So you can see we drop the food coloring, it is technically lots of little particles of food coloring, and they're all concentrated, but as time goes on, they will diffuse. It's a much slower process than it is with gases, but even without stirring, many think that I would need to stir, yes, stirring would expedite this process, but... Um, if I just dropped food coloring and let it sit over time, eventually that color would diffuse. And you can see that it's a much darker green right here, and it's a lighter green right here due to um, it reaching equilibrium and it becoming less concentrated as it diffuses. So liquids diffuse just like gases. The next thing we're going to talk about is specific to liquids, and it's called surface tension. You might have heard this term before, but surface tension is an effect within the surface layer of a liquid that results in a surface film. So think of film as like a layer um, that is impenetrable, although it, in surface tension it is penetrable, it's just, it's harder. 
So surface tension results from an imbalance of cohesive um, and cohes cohesive forces in a liquid. Cohesive forces happen between like molecules. So for cohesive forces to exist, the molecules must be of the same. Uh, but cohesive forces are attractions that hold the two molecules together. So think intermolecular forces is really what we're dealing with, but to be cohesive, they have to betwe be between the same molecule. So at the surface of the liquid, the liquid molecules have fewer neighboring molecules, so exhibit stronger attractive forces than their nearest neighbors at the surface. So you can look at this water molecule right here. He has four water molecules on either side. So his intermolecular forces are acting on all four sides equally. However, if you look at this guy right here, this one's on the surface, so there's air up here. There's no water up here. So instead of four, it only has three sides in which it is exhibiting its intermolecular forces. So the two on the side right here, what would have gone up is kind of having itself and distributing itself to the ones on either side. So molecules at the surface have stronger, a different strength of bonds than those down here under the water, which have water on all sides. So water specifically has extra high surface tension due to the extensive hydrogen bonds. So these stronger bonds between the intermolecular forces at the surface are extra strong because we have three intermolecular forces that are extra strong at the surface. So this extra strong uh, three intermolecular force combo right here causes a almost like a film on the water. This can be... Um, examined in a couple of examples. The first one is that you can float a paper clip on the surface of the water. A similar one that a lot of co that comes to a lot of students minds is how bugs, certain mosquitoes and small bugs can stand on the surface of the water. Um, it's because of the surface tension and their weight is small enough and distributed enough that they are able to float on top of the water as if there was an impenetrable film there. Um, similar to how this paper clip is floating on the water like so. Um, surface tension also causes um, liquid droplets, so any drop of liquid, to be spherical. So the reason water droplets are circular or spherical is due to surface tension. The inward forces on the surface molecules of the liquid droplet tend to cause the smallest surface uh, to volume ratio possible. So if you look, and this is like a flat surface and you can see like a water droplet on top, because these intermolecular forces right here, th this is our surface tension, that extra strong uh, surface tension, intermolecular force, force of attraction here. Um, all these inward ones create a net force going inward. Since there's no force of attraction going outward, our net force, because we have left, right, and down, the left and right will cancel, but the downward will pull the water inward. So that's why everything is pulling towards the inside, creating a sphere. And here you only see a half sphere, but this would work similarly if it was a complete sphere, everything would pull inward because of the net force going inward. Um, examples of this um, you can see are if you were to put water on a penny, and you can almost see it really well from this picture, it almost starts, the water starts to like overhang as a sphere. So you can add water, and the water is actually overhanging the edge of the penny, but because it has a net force going to the center, it will pull that water back in and create almost like a dome on top of the penny. Another example is on a leaf, you can actually see the sphere start to form. They don't flatten out, they stay as a sphere, sphere because of that surface tension. The next thing we want to talk about uh, as a property of liquids is called capillary action. It is the interaction between a liquid and a solid surface that causes the liquid to rise in a narrow tube. Um, now, it needs to be a narrow tube. The thicker the tube, the less likely uh, this is to happen, but in a narrow tube, you can really see it. So, capillary action is caused by two things, adhesion and surface tension. We talked about surface tension, so let's talk about adhesion. Adhesion is the attraction of a liquid surface to a solid surface. So, liquids are attracted to solid surfaces, and this will cause an upward force on the liquid at the edges. So, right here, because the liquid is attracted to the solid, if this had been flat, the little area right above that flat surface, some of these water particles over here are like, well, I want to touch the wall. Well, I want to touch the wall. So as many are going to touch the wall as they can, they're going to climb almost like on top of each other and reach the wall. 
but they can't go forever, and that's because of surface tension. So surface tension acts to hold the surface intact, resulting in a meniscus. And if you remember from the beginning of the year, meniscus is this dip that we see in liquids. In certain liquids, um, we don't see a meniscus. Uh, it actually forms the other way. In mercury, for example, the meniscus is a hump rather than a dip, and that um, is because of its chemical properties. But surface tension acts to hold the surface intact, resulting in a meniscus. So instead of just the edges moving upward, the whole liquid surface is dragged upward. So instead of every little water droplet climbing on the edges, so you have liquid along the edges, liquid along the edges, and the uh, drop be down here, these cause almost like a stringed effect of as these guys climb up, the surface of the liquid has to stay intact. So you get this dip. These are the guy right here, these are the water droplets climbing up wanting to touch the wall. And as they do that, some of it, this, uh, the water droplets here are the ones lost, but the surface of the water must stay intact and it's held together by cohesion. So capillary action, the adhesion is what causes the water to attract to the edges, but the cohesion is what causes uh, the level of the water to stay intact, the um, surface intact. So that's where you get the meniscus. Here's another example again. This right here is the adhesion, and this right here is our surface tension caused by cohesion. As you can see, the GIF is showing as we drop the straw in, the water climbs up on the edges, but the surface of the water still stays intact, and we form that dip or meniscus. That is all we have for liquid, so that one was a little bit shorter. Uh, please make sure you fill in your notes, and make sure you get to video three, which is about solids.